Hi there and welcome to your 2017 Forest River Vibe 277 RLS. We're just going to start in the back bumper here. You got this bumper cap just pulls on out. In here you'll find your sewer hose. Take note of these two, two ears here. Those will mount up onto your sewer outlet. Just get that cap on there and it keeps the smell away. Uh, down here you have your sewer outlet. You got, on the left is your black tank and on the right is your gray tank. You're always going to want to empty your black tank first and then your gray tank. That being said, your gray tank contains your, uh, all your, uh, the gray tank contains your sink water, your, uh, shower water. The black tank is going to contain all your toilet water, which is your dirtiest water. That's why you'd empty that first. Right here, you have your fresh water inlet. This fills your fresh water tank, which your water pump draws from. And here you have this storage compartment. Beside that, you have your black tank flush. So over time, if you notice that you're, you emptied your tank and your reader still reads that you know, you're a third or two-thirds or whatever it happens to be full, or you notice a nasty smell, a nasty sewage smell, if you just, while your black tank's hooked up, have your black tank open, hook a garden hose up to this end here, turn it on, it'll flush out that tank, helping with that smell or the debris on the probes. This is your city water connection. If you're on a site, a site with service, with water service, you can just hook a garden hose up to here. It'll pressurize your lines. Front of the trailer here, you get this black cover. Typically, you just flip it open. You'll turn the, the two 20-pound tanks on, 20-pound 20 20 barbecue tanks on. I'll just take this off for the purpose of this video. So what you do is you just turn these on, just like at home. You have your jack up front, down is down, up is up. This turns your light on and off. You got your battery box up front. And this compartment here, just more storage. This customer did go with the weight distribution. Here, you'll find your 25 foot water hose, as well as your 15 amp park adapter. We'll go over this park adapter when I go through the plug-in with this unit. Uh, right here and as well as at the back of the unit, you do have your jack control. So if you hit extend, those jacks will start making their way down. Once they contact the ground, you'll hear the motors kind of have a whine to them. That's when you stop. You don't want to over crank them. And then to retract them, just hit the retract button until they're both all the way up. They the legs will lower and raise at different like times, so don't worry about that. Just wait until it's fully extended and fully retracted. Right here, you have your fresh water tank drain. You just turn that on, turn that opens up. You can drain your fresh water tank if you're leaving the unit for a while. You don't want the water to go stale and stagnant. Right here, you have your hot water heater panel. Open this up inch 16th uh, drain plug whenever you go to fire up the hot water heater you always just want to hit that release valve so right now the tanks empty so you wouldn't want to fire it because you don't want to burn out any of the probes Get that open you have your exterior shower here you got two household plugs as well as a coax outlet uh, you just have your fridge vent right here. You do have your range stove vent. So whenever you get to your campsite, if you're going to use your stove or want to use your, your range hood for some reason, you just got to make sure this flap is open. Otherwise, nothing will be evacuated out. Whenever you do tow the unit, you always just want to make sure that you're going to clamp that down, just push it down. That way, whenever you're traveling, you're not getting dust inside the unit. The back here is just the rear 
uh, stabilizer jack. You got your satellite inlet and your cable inlet. And here you have your 30 amp plug. So just unplug this. You see this little ear here? Just line it up with that ear on the bottom. Line up those two ears. Give it that eighth turn, and you got a threaded collar to really lock it down. Uh, at the other end, you have your standard 30 amp plug end. Most campsites should have this plug. If they don't have this plug, you use your 15 amp adapter, or if you're at home wanting to run your fridge, you got the 15 amp adapter. Just keep in mind, whenever you're using that 15 amp adapter, you're not going to want to be running your AC or anything like that. You just want to be running basic necessities like lights and your fridge. Uh, to get inside the unit here, you just take this assist handle, fold it 90 degrees out like that, get the stairs out, just kind of pull them out that one time, bottom step folds out, and uh, sits down like that, take open the door, take a step inside, first thing you notice, your fire extinguisher down on your left, pull the pin, shoot, simple. Uh, keep in mind, just take note that this swivel chair does have to be put away with like this, otherwise it can contact the slide and break things or snap the cable. Uh, you have this switch here, turns on the, uh, uh, I don't know what that does actually. Uh, this button here is your slide out button, you just hit that button, hold it down, the slide will start making its way out. Just keep in mind, whenever you're running the slide out in this unit, just making sure that chair is not in the way. So you hear those motors wind up and, and it stalls out. That's when you know you're fully extended. Uh, on the right, you have your awning switch light. That'll do your LED strip on the awning. And beside that is your interior light switch. Turns on all your interior lights. Keep in mind that these lights do have their own power as well. So you can turn them on and off as you want. Uh, you have your water pump uh, button. You just turn that on. It'll turn on the water pump, which draws through your fresh water tank. Uh, your water heater, hit that switch on, that DSI fault light should stay on, but when you first uh, turn this on, the water heater is going to go through the procedure three times to try and light. If on the third time it doesn't light, this, thing, this light will stay on. That's when you turn this off, go to the water heater, hit that reset button, and then you turn it back on and it'll try and relight again. Sometimes there's air in the lines, it takes a minute for it to start. Uh, you have your stereo right next to it. No big deal, just like home. You got some storage underneath, as well as some coax inlets for your TV that you decide to hook up. And you do so also have your satellite uh, connection. This button here turns the satellite connection on. If you notice you have shitty radio signal, you can try turning this on, and it'll help with your boost your radio signal. Down below there, you do have your converter. Pop that open. Whenever a fuse, fuse pops, it'll sit in the middle, so you just got to turn it off and turn it back on to reset it. Whenever a fuse blows, there'll be a red LED light indicating which one blew, so you just got to replace it with the existing new fuse uh, above the little sit sitting area. You got cupboards which also you do have lights underneath there as well as a plug-in for whatever you'd like to plug in under there. Uh, you do have some nice covered space in here as well as your fridge, which does run on gas and 12 volt. Whenever you turn this on, it'll always try and look for power first and then it'll switch over to gas if you can't find power. If, you, if you're out boondocking and you do want it to run solely on gas, you just have to make sure this button is depressed and it will run solely on gas.
Uh, you got a microwave just like home. Here's the range hood. It does have a light and your fan. Uh, you have your stove here. So you just take that glass countertop, flip it open. To light it, you just hit the turn it on to light the, the knob to light and hit the spark button. And there you go, you got the and it's just the same thing. Uh, to turn your stove on, you're going to want to turn this knob to pilot, pilot on, and you're going to take a lighter and you're going to try and light the uh, thermocoupler here. It what can take a few minutes when you first get the unit out to clear all the air out of the lines. Once you heat that up enough, the pilot light will hold its own and you'll be able to turn it up to your desired temperature. Uh, you got your kitchen sink, which has hot and cold water. You got a little light right here, as well as the plug-in. Storage space. You do have little lights above the dinette and uh, couch here. More storage space above that. Uh, so this is a dinette, so it can go down into the bed. All you have to do to make that happen is just pull this table up, get the legs out of there. The table, just sit on this nice little edge here. You take your back cushions to fill in the middle, and you have another bed. Uh, you'll come into this little spot here. This light is on its own little switch here. You have your uh, thermostat, and below the thermostat, you have your LP detector. This detects propane. Propane is heavier than air. It'll sit on the ground. Whenever this thing detects it, if you have anything propane running, make sure you turn it off. Uh, to run this thermostat, just hit this button. Hold it for a second. Oh, sorry. You just hit this button. Turn it on. So it goes right away into cool auto. And then you hit it again, and it'll go into furnace, and then off. And... To turn it from auto, you can turn it to auto, low, auto, and then you have low fan and high fan. Auto is an on-demand system, so it'll kick on and off it as needed. I do typically like to have it on high fan. And there you go, the AC will kick in. And on that fan, if you just turn those louvers, It'll run the air through the ceiling ducts, but whenever you get to your campsite, just have this open, cool the main area, and then close that to run it through the rest of the unit to try and cool the rest of the unit off. To turn it off, you just hit that button again, and you go into furnace. Now, when your furnace runs, it always has a, uh, it always has like a three minute uh, run down time, so once you hit this off, the furnace will still stay running for about three minutes and then it'll turn off. No need to worry there. You take a step into the bathroom. You do have your light switch on your far left wall. You have a sink with hot and cold water. A little medicine cabinet. Nice big shower with hot and cold water on a swivel head. Uh, and then you have your toilet flusher on the right. Then you just take a step out. Open this door, you take a step into the bedroom. Light, light switch in the bedrooms just on your far right here. You flick that on. You do have your own bedroom door to outside as well as in the bathroom. This here is a TV backer. So you can put your TV here, get a coax cable, as well as plug-in. Uh, and then you have your nice little cabinets on each side. For the fire exit, you just pull this tab, pull the screen out, take this handle, turn it out, push it out, and there you go, out the window you go. That's about it for this unit here. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call.